Hello, I'm Richard Raffin. Um, give a look at this lump of cedar. Uh, now this came down as a gift um, with Dave Seagal, who's doing the videoing, has moved away from Canberra. Um, and he mentioned he was coming down to the Cairns Woodworking Group, or the Turners. And they said, oh, give him a bit of local timber. So or maybe Dave asked for local timber. So we've got this bit of cedar. Uh, they cut the end off a bit. I'm not quite sure why. Um, but maybe there's a wormhole there or something. Um, in the middle here, there's what looks like a bit of a split. Um, where it's fairly solid at the other end but what I normally do in this situation is cut off a very thin slice which I can bend and then I can see um, uh, what the wood's got in store so uh, that won't quite go through there so that's the first thing to do here And this is my general approach to cutting anything. So when I bend it, you can see well, the little splits which I thought were there are on the other side. So that's going around the growth ring is likely to be a bit of a problem because that means the, the wood's actually separated and uh, that can be quite dangerous. So what I'm looking at here really, uh, I can get quite a bit out of this log. Um, so I, w I don't want to go there, uh, I don't want to go there either, um, but I can get, now the other thing which is relevant is the width, um, so I've now got the height is that much, so I can get quite a good little bowl out of anywhere across here, I've got the greatest depth there, so I'm going to cut across there to start and my bowl will be sitting somewhere in there. Now that's going to leave a square piece in there which would be for some little end grain project, a box, something like that. And there's another one over here. So that's what I'll do. So that now comes back to, I hope where it came off. Am I that side? I've lost, lost back. No, here we are. Oh, I better have this right. Helps if you have it the right way up. Right. Okay, so that's going there. That's going up. Right. So it's going across there anyway. Going through the saw, um, maybe put it through this way first. And if you're really hungry, of the lace bobbin or a pen blank in there. might have been happening in there. Bend that. No, that's, oh, there's a split there, but I think we can cope with that. Probably square enough. So we're turning after all. Uh, that'll be another blank. And there. Right, so I 
could have made that slightly thinner, but that'll be all right too. Except there's what looks as though it might be a split there. Nope, that's solid. Good. Now, to get the bowl blank done, make a little bowl out of this. blades. Uh, this is a three-quarter inch 20 mil blade so it's, it's not good at going around corners this tight. So. Now I've got a couple of options here. I can, um, the pith is right there so I'll probably get a better pattern. Oh, no. Uh, it's all off to one side. I come over this side, but what I've got is another blank if I want it over the other side for something small. I hope I've got enough security here to be able to push this through here. Yeah. Doesn't feel too grabby. appeared here, which means the bowl's going to have a hole in the side unless I fill it. Uh, if it's high enough up the wall we can probably cope with that, and it's connected to that, almost certainly. So I could turn the whole thing up, oh no I can't, right, I'll live with that. Right, so we'll now turn that and see how it comes up. See, does it's pretty kind of hairy on the surface, which usually means it's going to be a little bit tricky to turn. But uh, we will see what happens. Right, so the right glass is on. And uh, need to hold this on the screw chuck to start with. Can I see it? Yes. Right, so the full length of this screw, I've padded it out with a couple of blocks because um, I've just been making a small bowl. And uh, drill a central hole here. Very light timber, so no point in trying to throw that on the screw as it's revolving. Right, so half inch spindle gouge. Just want to get the corner off first, just to get the weight to get it into balance. see if uh, so I'm clear of the um, uh, I've got a flat area there a little bit more to go there not too much that's not a nice sign um, so we'll see what happens and uh, I'll put it on the uh, what's that about a 40 mil chuck uh, so inch and three quarters or so Hey. 
hitting a little bit there because it looks like quite a small foot to this size bowl. Uh, but I don't have another chuck in between so at the moment, so we'll go for that one. It'll be a more arty bowl than not. And I can take the whole foot off later if need be. Now that I can feel is just not cutting as it should. So as I'm really using it for, uh, I'm not, I don't have the bevel rubbing, so uh, I can just hone, hone the edge. I don't normally hone gouges unless they're going to be used for some kind of shear scraping or this kind of cut. Because it, if you round the edge over, it just makes it a little bit more difficult to pick up a cut with the bevel rubbing. all the way, it seems to be cutting well. Let's see what happens. Well that really is a very small foot. Don't like that. Um, that's look as I've got the wrong size. My next chuck up this one which I think is far too big. Um, <coughs> I try to avoid rechecking <coughs> if I can um, just because it um, takes uh, just takes so much time um, and uh, if you're trying to make money at this business the less time you waste the better. Uh, Anyway, we'll just see where this foot goes, and I might be able to adopt, um, incorporate a, uh, a little detail on which I can grip. So it's not the end to do a kind of short bowl. Let's see what we can do here. I'm going to put a put a little shoulder here. I'd really like to have a foot which is more than that kind of a width. So just uh, wondering how I'm going to go about it. I can put a bead in there or somewhere in that area. I might put a series of beads and then I can grip one of them. That's what I'll do. <laughs> I'll come in a little bit more here. And the other advantage of this is I'll get a decent cut easily off the tool in one go, I hope. It's a clean cup, it's undulating a bit there, but uh, I can cope with that. I'm going to shear scrape the curve and then I'll come back and cut my little fixing beads. So that's if I put beads in there, I'll be able to grip somewhere around there, I'll be able to grip one of them with that chuck. So I'll start down here. Just rolling, taking the tool along the rest as I go. There's a separate video on how to do these. Beads for facework, we'll just leave it there and it's, I don't really like them set in like that, so I'm going to take a little shear cut to the bottom of the first bead.
here near the top, but we'll cope with that later. wondering, those of you who watched a number of my videos, how I get the chock off, I press the reverse button and then instantly hit the stop button and that just takes it off without too much effort on my part. But if you hit the wrong button you could lock the chuck on and take hours to get it off so you've got to be a bit careful doing that. lines on this depth drill uh, done on the grinder so I can see to the depth to which I need to go. It's just a bit, it's more, a bit more of an opening to get the drill started. Right, three spindle gouge somewhere here. Uh, three bell, bell gouge rather. Now that needs a touch up now. It's done quite a lot of work this morning, so just when that happens, you just go straight to the grinder and uh, just touch it up quickly. My freehand grind. Starts on its side, rolls slightly anti clockwise, pick up the shaving. Oh no, there was a split up near the rim, so I'm going to have a closer look at that. And there's a whole line across there, so. The decision really is, uh, and it's got a, an actual hole down in here, and there's a big patch of rot or something there. So I'm going to take it down to the bottom of that split. We came from an age when a split was a split and not part of a work of art. So, uh, Yep, can live with that bit. Uh, 
I do have to remember I've got grooves there or beads so I don't want a set of curtain rings suddenly appearing well, that should be alright I think Since half the bowl is buried in the chuck, it's probably wise to take it off and just feel it. Uh, it's still a little bit kind of, yeah, I've got a quarter of an inch to play with in there. So, knowing that I have that amount, I can come down with the, uh, with the gouge, just fair the cut in from about halfway down, and commit. One twenty this time because it's a pretty torn out sand grain, I think. very soft wood so I'm rounding over the edges. It certainly seems to work better with these kinds of woods. with the letters, with the warp of the material.
is uh, kind of need some oil to get in there. And probably from the other side as well. No, that's okay. Right, they could probably stand a different kind of finish, but would be something I don't have. So oh, that looks all right. <laughs> it's got its feature hole, so that makes it a work of art there for it's twice the value. <laughs> Right, it's a little bowl like that, they're really nice little nut bowls, that kind of thing, so always useful to have.